Hello again, welcome to Small Caps. I'm Peter Capsamus. Well, as the journey towards discovering a cancer cure continues, one ASX-listed biotech company is making significant inroads in the quest to improve patients' lives and to establish value and trust. Immugene, that's ASX code IMU, has a range of platforms aimed at promoting the body's immune system against cancerous tumours. To tell us more, I'm joined by company CEO and Managing Director, Leslie Chong, Leslie, good to have your company on Small Caps today. Thank you so much for having me. Look, it's uh, I'm quite intrigued by the tale of this company. So uh, first of all, take us through uh, the Imugene story, Leslie. What's your mission, your purpose? Ultimately, what is your why? So our why is quite simple and lofty. Um, it Patients and cancer patients are our North Star. And we have a myriad of items in our pipeline that actually addresses some significant needs in cancer patients, such as gastric, bile duct cancers, non-small cell lung cancer, breast cancer, ovarian cancers, uh, now hematological diseases, blood cancers as well. So um, I am really proud that across all our products, we have at least um, several different responses, but also we have a complete response in most of our therapies, which is just unheard of um, in a phase one and phase two setting. So what I'm trying to say is across all our products, we have, uh, we have patients currently still on our drug that's been living for uh, three years. Some have been living for more than a year uh, and most of the time they're given a life sentence of roughly anywhere between four months to maybe a year, but we've got patients with complete remission of their cancer. So I'm quite proud of the products that we have and we work via your immuno system. So we enact your immune system to come and attack your cancer cells. Yeah, we'll get into, uh, we'll get into the one, you know, the, 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 the range of products or platform as I re, platforms as I refer to them in my intro. Uh, take us through them one by one, uh, Leslie. The first and indeed intriguing is the CAR-T technology. This is where the therapy uses healthy donors' T cells, right? And I've seen a very interesting uh, video on your website which uh, uses a whole samurai sword fight as, uh, as, a, as an analogy, which is quite uh, uh Quite good, actually. But um, tell us, take us through the uh, the CAR T technology. Absolutely. So uh, currently, the CAR Ts, the chimeric antigen therapeutics, are all approved in blood cancers that are autologous CAR T. So that is the patient's own T cells that are re-engineered, and then the T cells are given back to the patients. Now, there's variability there because the patients have to wait anywhere between 19 to 42 days to get their therapies, to re-engineer their therapies, their own T cells. However, we think the future is really off the shelf um, and not autologous, but allogeneic. So allogeneic CAR Ts are where they take super donors. So donors that provide their T cells, we re-engineer them, soup them up and make them super size. And so you're not relying on your tired T cells to do the work because a lot of these patients, when they qualify for an autologous CAR T um, therapeutics, they've already blown through several lines of chemo. They may have received stem cell research, et cetera, a stem cell uh, placement replacement. However, their T cells are quite tired at this point. A lot of them actually uh, need more chemo just to stay alive before they get their therapy. Allogeneic CAR-T provides a means of on-demand, off-the-shelf therapy when the patient needs them. So we have an allogeneic CAR-T named Azercell that we just made an acquisition back in September of 2023. We already have patients on and we're in a setting where it's confirmatory. So once we have these patients confirmed, then they can we can move into a registration or a pivotal study, which is um, basically the phase before you can actually market the product. So 
That's azer cell, our allogeneic CAR T. And then we have our oncolytic virus. So oncolytic virus that only attacks and replicates in solid tumors, so malignant cells. And we've already seen actions um, from our current phase one study. So we've got a myriad of patients that have already come on and have stability of the disease. Some have had six lines of therapy prior to even coming on our study. So the fact that their tumors are cold, they haven't responded to any therapy, and yet they come on to our oncolytic viral therapy and respond in such a way because our oncolytic virus is actually attacking their solid tumors so and let, then leaving the healthy cells. Let me just uh, let me just pause and I know, I know we won't get uh, bogged down too much into the uh, forensic detail of how uh, it all works, but effectively up until now, most commonly is what you're saying, uh, chemotherapy or, or, or radiation has been the, the, the common, the, the, the go-to, if, we, if, if you will, uh, form of therapy. Now, what you're saying with your CAR-T uh, therapy, you're actually getting uh, healthy T-cells from donors and I think you mentioned the word souping them up and putting them into the, the patient's uh, bloodstream. Is that effectively right? Yes, for blood cancers. For blood cancers, okay. Yeah. And the the other one you mentioned, the on colonitic, sorry, I've, mis mis I've, I've definitely- Oncolytic. Oncolytic, yeah. So how does that vary towards, uh, compared to um, the, um, the, the T cell therapy? So with azer cell, which is the allogeneic CAR T, that's engineering your T cells or someone else's T cells so that it can continuously attack your tumors, right? So you've got in blood cancer specifically. So it goes after a certain target called CD19. So that's azer cell. It sort of reprograms your entire body to and it soups up your T cells to go after a blood cancer type. With oncolytic viral therapy, it is an oncolytic virus that infects your tumor cells and then explodes and then the virus goes on to other solid tumors. So it multiplies, goes on to other solid tumors. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it attracts your immune system to say there's something awry here. So then your immune system also comes into the fight. So it's not re-engineering your immune system. It is actually wakening your immune system. So CAR T's are a whole reprogramming. Mm. And oncolytic virus has more of the teaching. So you mentioned trials. What kind or how many trials are there in each of those uh, therapies at the moment? Are they in Australia? So, are they in the US? Uh, are they multiple countries? What, 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 uh, where and how, how many? So Azer cell has already had 84 patients worth of data in a phase one. And so we're moving forward in a confirmation study in a phase 1B before we move into a pivotal study. So that's the registration of study before you market a product. So that study is currently done in the U.S., but we're also evaluating Australian sites for blood cancers. So it's a late line of lymphoma that we're looking at for Azer cell. Right. For our oncolytic viruses, we also have sites in Australia as well as the U.S. We have 38 patients that we've already dosed to date, and we're dose escalating. So that's a phase one. And we're looking at a multitude of solid tumors. We're not looking at blood cancers. We're only looking at solid tumor types there. What's been the, uh, can, you, it's, can you shed some light in terms of how the uh, trials are going so far? It is going fantastic. Um, I can't express to you how gleeful our team and myself are whenever we hear about a patient that is starting to get response. There's a patient with bowel duct cancer that's been living for more than uh, more than you know 400 days now, and it's been a, just a revelation to see that our oncolytic viruses is actually attracting your immune system and then keeping this patients or these patients cancer away. So we've got a lot of patients who've gone on, as I said, six lines of 
prior therapy, chemo, radiation, sometimes checkpoint inhibitors. So those are the immunotherapies that are approved out there. Then they come on to our experimental oncolytic viruses. It's stabilizing their disease or it's making their tumors shrink and to the point where they're shrinking where they're non-existent. So bile duct, melanoma, we have testicular cancer, uh, breast cancer, non-sponsor lung cancer. So these multitude of tumor types are starting to see effect from our oncolytic viruses. Uh, it's a cliche to say it's world first, but uh, can I put it to you that, uh, is it fair to say you're leading the pack in this field? We are, um, especially with another product that we call Oncarlytics. This is the, the oncolytic virus that has a protein in it that can be combined with a CAR T. So there's nothing like Oncarlytics out there. And we're currently in clinical trials and getting patients on. But in terms of azer cell, the fact that we actually work in autologous CAR T therapy. So these are therapies, again, taking their own patient's T cells and then re-engineering them, putting them back. Those patients, unfortunately, relapse or fell off the off their lines of therapy. And then after that, they really don't have anything else. So if our azer cell can affect in that population, we would have a world's first in that dire needed, you know, um, patient population where they've gone on autologous CAR T. They have a late line of lymphoma called DLBCL that they'll go on. So that would be a world's first to have a marketed product in that space. Right. Okay. So definitely keeping busy. So yeah, are you rolling out any other products? You've, you've referred to, I think, three, and I think you've got four on your book, so to speak. Uh, what cancers are they targeting? So our B-cell immunotherapy, Hervax, is currently in gastric, a late line of gastric setting. So we were proven successful. We've got patients still going on to our Hervax um, after three, four years. And then we also have another clinical trial that's addressing late line of gastric cancer patient population. We're also looking at pd one vax That was in non-small cell lung. We still have a patient going on two, three years with complete remission um, on that study. And then we're moving on to uh, what's called an MSI high colorectal study because we've seen anti-PD-1s work wonders in that space and we think that we could affect it earlier. So we have a phase two with PD-1 vax in colorectal setting and it's even before they have surgery. So they get our therapy, it really arrests their tumors, they get it resected and then they have that therapy again. So it's this beautiful early line phase two with PD-1. You, you've uh, you probably, you'd, you'd say that you've got a pretty uh, pretty good team working on these things and you uh, and you must be quite proud, you'd, you'd be fair to say. Well, I have one of the most experienced team uh, on, you know, working with me at Imogene. Um, all together, our clinical team have, over 150 years of experience and all of us have had a direct hand in getting cancer drugs approved um, anywhere between 13 to 15 drugs that we've had a direct hand in getting uh, cancer drugs marketed well you'd say that these trials that you've uh, working on um, will they lay the foundation for fda approval and if so what does it mean for the future of the company uh, and for the future of, I guess, uh, uh, cancer fighting? So we have a few products that we think it's going to be meaningful in this space. There are, there are many cancer drugs out there, and especially the ones that have failed off of recent, you know, autologous car -Ts to folks that have had no line of therapy after they fell off of their six lines of therapy. And then it, even if the approved immunotherapies are not working for them, they can come on the oncolytic virus. So I see a real path for future approvals, but I see an even um, a, a just a delightful path where we could partner with Big Pharma so that we can get this um, out there sooner, faster for patients. Um. 
what's the rate of cancer on a global scale at is it is it uh, is it growing rapidly is it stagnating is it decreasing uh judging by the fact that you're putting quite a bit of effort into these clinical trials and these uh, therapies uh I probably can answer my own question but I I guess you know cancer is a dreaded word obviously and there's all different types of cancers but I guess collectively are we seeing obviously more awareness that there's a there's a growing fight against uh, various cancers but overall uh, is the rate of cancer increasing or is it sort of level playing field so to speak what what are you seeing Well I think you know diagnosis is increasing to your point, there's much more awareness, early detection as to the number of early diagnoses. But then with early diagnosis, you have um, a wealth of, of cancer drugs out there that could potentially prolong your life. So I think the cancer rate has only gone up because we can, we just know better. We go to the doctors earlier to say, hey, what's going on with me? So that's that's that. But I think prognosis have, have greatly improved. So whereas these patients previously were given only anywhere between two months to, let's say, you know, a few years, we've got these new drugs out there that is leading to a cure. And so this is where imaging is quite delight, you know, delighted in that we are able to provide an early complete response and even a phase one study, even at a mid dose or, you know, um, on upwards of uh, not even that high dose. So I'm really pleased that early on we're seeing great response and great um, uh, signals with across all our studies. And and I truly believe that one or if not all of our therapies will provide um, a lengthy, uh, hopefully a curative effect to to many patients. Okay, so early detection and commonly equals uh i guess uh, a longer life uh so is that is that the the focus for for you what is it is it prolonging life or is it actually saving lives and as you said finding a cure what's you know ultimately the end goal so uh it's been previously uh a lot of the cancer drugs prolong life but i i would hope me and my team haven't had lots of drug development experience um, we'd love to live to, you know, provide a cure for some of our patients, um, if not for our family and friends, um, everyone. So that is the, that is the patients are our North star. And if those patients are living for a cure, then that's what we're, that's what we're aiming for. And before we wrap things up, Leslie, what message do you want potential investors watching and listening to this uh, interview right now to take away with them? I guess why would uh, so-called mum and dad investors want to uh, invest in Imugene? I think we've got some notable products in our pipeline. We have a, a cash runway that's going to help us develop these products to a pivotal or uh, a, a role where it's going to either be partnered with Big Pharma or we're gonna have an approval. So um, I think Imaging is one of those companies that is gonna, you know, has a can do attitude and we're gonna take our products as far as we can. Uh, definitely a fascinating interview and discussion today, Leslie. Some of it is, uh, uh, you know, beyond my average brain, but uh, I look forward to uh, learning more and talking to you uh, as the year unfolds. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, Imugene will be uh, uh, in the news for all the right reasons, uh, hopefully. Uh, and good luck to you and your team in uh, finding a cure. Uh, thanks for your time today and joining us on Small Caps. Thank you.